Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at the gaming prowess of the Intel Core Ultra 245K or 24.5, whatever, however you want to call it. Actually, it doesn't really make much difference what you call it. It is somewhat disappointing, let's be completely honest with you. So, if you are building a new Intel Core Ultra system, which I doubt you probably are, but maybe this video has kind of piqued your interest and you're maybe inquisitive to how well it performs or you're just here to mock i don't care whichever way it is the views will count regardless so that's happy days um you probably notice i've already got one of these on the table so this is a nvidia gt 1030 possibly one of the worst graphics cards ever made that might not be the case after you see this video so today we're going to take a look at the intel 245k with its integrated graphics featuring a whole four X cores and up to, I think it's 1900 megahertz, potentially overclockable. I didn't even look, to be honest with you. Potentially you can do if you want to, but the idea of this video is if you're buying into the new Intel Core Ultra system, you spent a bunch of money on one of those expensive Z-Class motherboards, you picked up your processor for a few hundred pounds, you didn't have quite enough money to stick in a graphics card, so you're thinking, well, can I squeeze through and tell the January sales or whenever the sales are to just use the onboard graphics? Can I actually play some games and have a reasonably enjoyable time? Well, I've done that testing for you, so you don't have to worry about it. So let's head over to the computer and we'll take a look and I'll take you through some of the results. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at a little bit of CSGO. Sorry, CS2, force of habit. This is running at a whopping 1080p with the medium preset, so not overly taxing, and we're getting somewhere in the region of about 60 to 75 FPS. Now, to be fair, if you want to, you can actually see in the top corner of the screen there is the FPS counter error going. Unfortunately, I did forget on a few of these games to show you exactly what the th frame times are, but I will tell you anyway, and you'll probably see it from a graphic on the screen as well. This is not the greatest of experiences, and as you can see, when I'm moving from left to right quite quickly, there is some kind of weird tearing or something going on. Whether that was down to the capture card, whether it was down to the gameplay, I'm not entirely sure. It didn't feel particularly smooth, if I'm honest. It was playable, so I can't take that away from it. And if you are into CS2 and you don't have a graphics card and you have an Intel Core Ultra 2 245K, and you want to play this game, then you can play it. Just don't expect to be ultra competitive and do expect to have your expectations very low, much like the video settings. Now, of course, if you want to, you can play this competitive settings, turn it right down to low. But I think for most people, kind of medium is about the most they're willing to sacrifice. And overall, to be honest with you, it wasn't too bad. I did have an enjoyable time playing it but it wasn't as good as having a dedicated graphics card, that's for sure. And it certainly wasn't anywhere near as such an enjoyable experience as something more modern, such as the AMD AM5 8600G, which we've also done a video on, which I strongly suggest you check out if you're considering iGPU gaming. Okay, so next we will be taking a look at some cyberpunk. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why I decided on doing this, but it is what it is. And this is running at 1080p, this time at the lowest settings. And in the moment, we're getting somewhere around the sort of 25 to 30 frames per second, sometimes a few more, sometimes dipping a little bit lower, depending on what's going on. But this is actually one of those games where the frame rate isn't entirely kind of devastating to the gameplay. It's still pretty enjoyable. It doesn't require kind of super fast reflexes. As you can see here, we're just dossing around with a scope on a rifle here, trying to take out one of these uh, police droids. And yeah, it's not really particularly fast action. In fact, I have to wait for it to reload anyway. So yeah, it's absolutely fine. The game still looks like Cyberpunk. It's not particularly uh, fancy. There's uh, certainly limited shadows and the effects are very limited, but there's still a little bit of lighting effects going on. If you look up at the top there, you can see we've got the floodlight looking down, and you can still see some kind of almost god rays coming down from the side of there. And uh, yeah, there are a few lighting effects still available, even at this very, very low preset. But to be said, it was actually relatively enjoyable, and I carried on playing this for a good 20 minutes or so, maybe even longer. Uh, got a little bit carried away 
It was actually enjoyable. Not as good as having a graphics card. I've said this before, but yeah, there you go. There is Cyberpunk running at 1080p low settings. And just to highlight what I'm saying here, this is going to be a very common thing. Looking around about the sort of high 20s to mid 30 FPS for 1080p gaming with this iGPU is uh, pretty common. And you can see here our minimum was one frame per second, which is uh, yeah pretty awful. Again, this is an older game. This is Far Cry New Dawn, and it's got a little bit of a graphical challenge to it. Again, there is a really big dip there again. This is also one of those games where you don't necessarily need those extreme rapid responses. It still looks and plays reasonably well, and I did have a little bit of a run with it, as we'll see after this benchmark ends. You can see we've got highs of 33, lows of 1, and average FPS of 27 FPS. So it's uh, it's not looking great. This graphics card only having 128 megabytes of VRAM to allocate to it, it really doesn't help its calls at all. But actually in kind of just normal gameplay scenarios, without the frame rate going, if you're not looking at it and not kind of too worried about it, it is actually quite playable. And here I'm taking on some of the, uh, the bad guys and uh, this doesn't look all good. I think I might get run over. Nope, let's blow them up instead. So, as you can see, it's, it is certainly playable. This, again, is Far Cry New Dawn, 1080p, lowest settings, and we're getting around about 30 FPS on average. Again, this is one of those games where, depending on the foliage count, where you are, you may see some uh, much lower FPS, you may see much better FPS. But still, I am noticing there is that occasional lag spike where it drops down to maybe one or two FPS does seem to be quite common, especially in this title, and also it was visible in Cyberpunk as well. Anyway, so there you go, there's Far Cry New Dawn. It certainly is playable, enjoyable, marginally so, um, but if you haven't got anything else, then what can you do? And next up, we've got a little bit of Fortnite. So this is Fortnite 1080p in performance mode. This is actually quite an improvement and I've actually put up the Xbox game counter thing on the screen so you can actually see some of the FPS and the CPU utilization etc. Uh, the GPU is under basically 99 or 100% load all of the time at 1080p with the performance settings and actually it's pretty playable. This was getting around about 100 FPS in some places. I think we're at about 120 at the moment whilst we're coming into land and weirdly not many stutters actually running quite smoothly as you can possibly see and again looking at the graph there you can see pretty much what is going on going in there picking up some weapons yeah i was actually a little bit surprised that this ran as well as it did that does appear to be the thing with intel graphics and intel graphics drivers there's some titles which really do quite well but there's some titles which really struggle or have got little glitches to them which is really disappointing because potentially Intel could make a real name for themselves in the graphics market. Heck, they've been uh, doing onboard graphics for as long as I can remember, so you'd think they'd get pretty good at it at some point. No doubt they will eventually. So yeah, this is Fortnite running at 1080p, performance mode. Again, FPS is uh, not too bad at all. Pretty much constantly around the kind of 100 FPS mark, which is absolutely fine, I think, for this, especially if you're trying to play somewhat competitively. This is, again, in performance mode, which I would strongly suggest you use. If you turn it up to anything else other than performance mode, you're going to be looking at the same as what we are looking before previously, around right about 25 to 30 FPS, which is, uh, yeah, pretty awful, not very playable, and certainly not that enjoyable, especially for faster moving titles such as Fortnite. Anyway, let's move on to the next title. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at a slightly newer title. This is... Dead Island 2, this is running at 1080p, lowest settings, and FSR set to balance mode. This actually isn't too bad at all. There's a little bit of um, frame tearing going on every now and then, but this is generally running between sort of 40 to 50 FPS, which for this title actually I was uh, pretty impressed with. It doesn't do too bad at all, and it's still actually pretty nice visually. It does slow down there when you get those kind of uh, monster kill effects. But yeah pretty good and the visuals like I said pretty decent I don't think you can go too far wrong when you're in more enclosed areas such as 
in this at the moment we're actually in the I believe it's the jewelers inside the, uh, the the mall there it's a lot easier on the GPU because there's less going on it's uh, obviously more enclosed space once you start moving outside into the open areas you are going to experience a little bit of a frame drop again this is one of those games where it's kind of almost console like so it doesn't really matter if you drop down to maybe 30 fps it's not ideal ideally we want 60 fps as a bare minimum but in terms of actual gameplay and in being able to enjoy the title this was absolutely fine again i would much prefer to play it on a dedicated graphics card or an amd igpu but it is what it is and uh, when it comes to using a modern intel platform this is about the best you're going to get out of it let's move on to the next title Okay, so next we've got Wreckfest, and this is just the, the start of the uh, the laps here, the race, I should say. Uh, FPS counter is in the top right-hand corner. Again, I forgot to put it up on the Xbox game bar. This is actually running Wreckfest at 1080p, actually medium settings, surprisingly. And we're looking at anywhere between kind of 60 to 70 FPS, which is, I think, acceptable. I think with this, I'd prefer to use it in medium rather than low. And have higher FPS. I think this is uh, pretty much all it needs to be. It doesn't really need to be much higher than this. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I'm not too sure whether, because at the moment we're in the winter months, I'm actually recording this on Christmas Eve 2024. So, see Wreckfest being Wreckfest. Every single map has dang snow on it, which possibly doesn't help when you're trying to compare games with other recordings you've done where there wasn't snow. I'm sure it must affect the frame rate somehow, whether it improves it, whether it worsens it, I honestly don't know. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section. But again, this was actually pretty enjoyable. I did uh, enjoy this, and actually I think if I remember rightly, I did finish this coming in first position, which is uh, pretty awesome. Which obviously, if you're having a bad experience, it's unlikely you're gonna win a race. So that is uh, pretty much it from Wreckfest. Pretty enjoyable, reasonable frame rates, still looks quite nice so yeah if breakfast is your thing and you don't have a gpu this little intel 245k is going to do absolutely fine okay next up we've got something which is uh, very easy to run praise the lord uh, this is if you didn't know already rocket league 1080p this is in again performance mode and we're getting somewhere in the region about 120 fps again i forgot to put the xbox game counter thing on for fps but i think when the FPS is this bad, then it kind of doesn't really matter. What matters is how it actually feels rather than the raw numbers. And to be fair, playing this actually felt all right. It was uh, responsive, snappy. It doesn't look the best, as you can see. There's basically no shadows, no uh, filtering. I don't think there's even any anti-aliasing, but it was enjoyable, which ultimately, I think when you're playing a video game, that is really what you're looking for. I think personally I'd much rather have a game which played well but didn't look particularly brilliant rather than a game which looked absolutely amazing but felt awful to play. So okay, let me know what you think in the comment section. I think that is a, a pretty fair assessment for most people, hence why we try to get 60 FPS as a minimum for all games. Anyway, I'm waffling on here. This was enjoyable. It was playable. I've got no real complaints about Rocket League at 1080p. Performance setting. Again, run about 100 to 120 FPS, sometimes a little bit more. Absolutely fine. So again, if this is your jam, then you're going to be absolutely fine. And just as a kind of final sanity check, so you can get an idea of what the performance is like relative to other iGPUs or GPUs out there on the market, I did run Time Spy, just normal Time Spy. And um, yeah, to be fair, it wasn't great. Uh, 2,312 points. And that equated to 2,018 points on the GPU and 13,400 on the CPU. So as you can see there, there is quite a, a deficit there from one to the other. Very, very unbalanced. A very good processor, to be honest with you. The uh, 245K is a really nice CPU. It feels very smooth in operation when in use with a graphics card. But with iGPU, it's, uh, yeah, it leaves a little bit to be desired. So anyway, there is the Intel integrated graphics on the Intel Core Ultra 245K. Let me know what you think in the comment section. 
Okay, so there you go, you've had a look at what the Intel Core Ultra 245K is actually capable of with its integrated GPU and uh, yeah, don't throw out your GT 1030 anytime soon because uh, you might want to use it. Unfortunately, the onboard graphics for this Intel generation of processors isn't particularly strong, but it does appear that the CPU itself is improving after its initial launch. Some of the Windows updates recently have improved performance and we're still waiting on a new microcode update to uh, try and fix some of the other issues which have happened since launch. So if you were interested in how the onboard graphics were on the Intel 245K, hopefully now you're fully informed and you'll probably do the sensible thing and buy yourself a graphics card, even a cheap used one would be beneficial. Pick up something like a 1060, you'll have a much, much better experience than the onboard graphics. But if you can't and you really can't afford it, it is playable, just do kind of uh, temper your expectations because it's uh, you're gonna be fiddling with the settings a lot to try and get it to be workable for your particular liking. At least I think you will. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you wanna see more content of like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.